Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the Aaron Advantage. I just wanted to give a quick introduction to this video. On August 16th, I went and spoke with Liberty Financial to help them figure out ways to deepen their relationships utilizing social media. There were a lot of great questions, a lot of great information, and I think this could be useful to anyone who's trying to build a brand or more awareness online. Check it out. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Uh, appreciate everybody coming out. Wow, this is a bigger crowd than what we normally get. Reason why is Cindy put this on instead of me, so you guys actually all showed up. So that, that's great. But the real reason is because we have Aaron Luttrell here. Yeah. Aaron Messi Tucker and the Aaron Advantage. We're really excited for him to come here and talk about deepening relationships with social media. As everybody's seen on, on Facebook and Instagram, all the different uh, medias, uh, Aaron is, is great at what he does. He knows how to get himself out there, his company out there, and we just appreciate you coming and giving us some tips and hope we'll learn from it and gain some business. Thank you. Okay, so for everybody in the room, I need one favor real quick because we got to sync audio on multiple devices. I've got a microphone right here. We got one here, here, and here. So I need everybody on the count of three to give me a big clap so we can sync up the audio when I'm going and editing this video. So one, two, three. All right, thank you very much. All right, as Andy said, today I'm going to talk to you specifically about how to deepen relationships with social media. More specifically about how to utilize social media to have offline conversations through doing the most important thing that all of us fail to do most of the time, which is put attention on ourselves in some way. So before you can ever sell somebody a loan or sell somebody a house or basically answer any question they might have, you have to be able to get their attention. Social media is a free distribution channel that allows you to do that more effectively than any other media that has ever existed in the past. I'm going to get into tactics at the very end on specific platforms and different things. So if you have questions, hold on specific ways to do posts or tag things or anything else like that, hold those till the end. If you have any questions specifically about any point that I'm making while I'm speaking, I like to make these talks interactive. So don't hesitate to raise your hand, interrupt, or just blurt out anything that you want to talk about. First off, today I'm going to break everything down into three special sections and then the Q&A session at the end. So first off, we're going to talk about what to post, your content strategy, diversity and frequency of your posts, distribution strategy, which is going to be the platforms, context and engagement strategy that you utilize, practical advice, the technology needed, the required budget, and overcoming objections. Finally, at the end, I'll go ahead and open it up for a question and answer session on any specific tactical questions you have, like how do I actually create a post? How do I load a video? How do I do any of these types of things? Does anybody in here not have Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube? We got one person. So by the end of the day, hopefully we can get somebody encouraged to set up one of these things or do more with all of these things if you haven't been doing them previously. All right, this is the number one question that I get from people all the time. What do I post? I don't have anything to say. Nobody thinks I'm interesting. I don't have any information that anybody wants to listen to. I'm in real estate. Why would anybody want to listen to me was the first thing I thought. And then I realized, oh wait, there's an entire television network dev devoted to people looking at homes, remodeling homes and doing all of these things. Now you may be thinking as a lender, who cares what I have to say about the lending industry? Well, I'm gonna tell you today that it's not just talking about lending that's important. So first we're gonna go through our content strategy today. The first thing I wanna tell you is that all content is divided into three categories, which are written words, pictures, and videos. There's nothing else. That's all there is. Anything is content. You may have seen, if you follow Taylor on TikTok, that you can do short form videos, you can do long form videos like my podcast that I've posted, or you can even do just simple images that you post in different places. All of these also offer you the opportunity to write a description for the, prop, or for the piece of content that you're putting out there. So you have the ability to do written words on every single post that you do. So when we're talking about written words, those are specifically comments, articles, or messages. Comments are important as any individual on any social media platform. When's the last time somebody in here has had a birthday and gotten hundreds of responses from people saying happy birthday? Anybody ever get that? 
How many of you go back and comment thank you to every single person? Very few people. Thanks so much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. That wish me happy. Well, let me tell you why it's more important to comment on every single specific post on your page. Because it does two things for you. First off, it reinvigorates the algorithm for that person's audience by you commenting back on their post. And secondly, it shows that your page has more engagement because it shows as a comment on your page, even if you're, even if you're the one that's doing it. So comments are imperative to make sure that people see activity on your page, which vigs the algorithm to show that to more people. More of your friends will see your stuff in their feed. It's even more important when you're doing that on a page versus a profile because Instagram and Facebook know, Meta, the new company, that if you're a business uh, profile or page, they do not want to put that information out organically. They want to try to force you to pay to play. But if you have activity with comments and other things, that actually gets you more organic reach to be out in front of more people. Articles, long form content that you can put out on LinkedIn or as notes on Facebook. This is a way that you can show your expertise in a way that other people don't have the opportunity to do. You can write a five paragraph article about why rising interest rates aren't as bad as people think they are. It can be an opinion piece, it can be facts, it can be whatever you want it to be. You can write an article about community events that are going on that people might find interesting. You can write an article about why Rocket Mortgage is not the best option for buyers even though they spend more money advertising their services than any other lender in existence. I was recently talking at Arlette and I had one lender out of everybody whenever I asked this question raise their hand. Who likes Rocket Mortgage? And everybody's like, oh no, Rocket Mortgage is the worst. One person said, I love Rocket Mortgage because when I hear that somebody's been pre-approved, I know that I have the opportunity to beat their rate, offer better service, and convert that client today. Utilizing that information and putting it out in writing is something that you can do to set yourself apart because most lenders are not doing that. Up next, we got pictures. Who has Instagram? Raise your hand. Do you go to Instagram to read a whole bunch of words? Or do you just scroll through the feed to look at a bunch of pretty photos? This is an entire social network devoted to nothing but pictures when it was first created. It was actually first called Bourbon, and all it was was a uh, photo app that all you could do is take pictures, put on filters, and then post those photos with absolutely no context, no information, no description, or anything else, because people want to see photos. Mostly because people want to see what they're missing out on, because everybody has FOMO, and they're like, oh, somebody's doing something cool and I need to take a look. <laughs> Memes. Another quick opportunity for you to go out and put out information that is relevant today utilizing something that is in the zeitgeist. You can find uh, the Kermit the Frog meme like, yeah, I use Rocket Mortgage because I don't really care whether or not I'm taken care of, but that's none of my business. It's an easy way for you to have something topical that you can put out in front of somebody that has words on it that convey a message easily and quickly with that one catchy photo be, that will stop people in their tracks and they'll want to sit and read that. Drawings. Anybody have any kind of artistic ability at all? Have you ever thought about just posting a drawing on Instagram or on Facebook or any of these other places? I have. You have? Yeah. What kind of engagement did you get? Uh, a lot of comments. Did you respond to those comments? Yes. Yeah. So you posted a drawing and you had an opportunity to have conversations with people online that could potentially deepen your relationship with that person that may not have happened otherwise. I'm a terrible artist. But I posted a photo of a Donald Duck that I drew for my kids on Instagram one time, and it is one of the single most engaged with posts that I've ever had on Instagram. What does that have to do with real estate? Nothing. But it afforded me the opportunity to have conversations with these people to deepen my relationship with them so that whenever it comes time for them to think about making a move, I'm already top of mind because they've just recently engaged with something that I've seen, which gives me more opportunity to put that information in front of them. Finally, infographics. I don't know what it is about Reddit specifically, but they go crazy for infographics and people love that kind of stuff. Tumblr was the same way. Facebook works this way as well because it shows it as an image and it can give you an opportunity to give a lot of detailed information in an image with a better algorithmic uh, opportunity to put that in front, in front of your con consumers. Infographics are simply just a drawing or an image. Is somebody ringing? Aaron, come on. That sounds like a laptop. Sorry. Can't be me. Kevin, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin.
Kevin. Come on. All right, for the video, Kevin Kirk. This is Kevin Kirk's fault, interrupting. Now, Kevin, when I said you can interrupt, I thought it would at least be with a question or something. Come on. Uh, okay, so infographics are a way to vig the algorithm by putting out a photo that has a lot of written words on it that can convey a lot more information. Something that I've seen a lot of people doing recently is specifically putting out the trends of the 30 year mortgage rate because everybody's talking about how high rates are now compared to last year because it's really easy to point back to a year ago and say they were getting rates in the twos and now they're in the fives okay let's point back to 1989 when they were 19 percent and show the curve of how much better it actually is today it's a quick easy way to get that information out in front of people finally videos and sound videos for me is my number one most fun thing to do I'm making videos today specifically because I know that this is where I shine. This is something that I love to do. This is an easy way to convey a lot of information and I don't have to type. I know what I want to say. I can look you in the eye. I can then put that out and it conveys my personality, my humor and my style automatically to the people that are watching those videos. Long form video is not dead. YouTube still gets billions of views every single year because people will sit and watch long form video. Short form video, you can post something up to 15 seconds on a Facebook story, 30 seconds on an Instagram story, and it is amazing how much interaction that you can get from that. You can do all kinds of different things with video that don't have the same impact in photos because people aren't gonna sit and watch and listen to things, or people will sit and watch and listen to things that you wanna say versus try to read it. So every single platform that exists right now is trying to mimic TikTok because it has more organic viral reach than any other platform that has ever existed. And it is all short form videos. So that is the number one place that I would be focusing efforts if I was gonna start fresh on anything today, short form video. It doesn't have to be TikTok. It doesn't have to be Facebook. It doesn't have to be Instagram, but it should be something that you can double down on and get really, really good at. Finally, sound. Has anybody ever listened to a podcast? Show of hands. Almost everybody in the room. The cool thing about sound is you can easily get that off of any video that you do. You can utilize a video, rip the sound off of that and load that specifically into Anchor FM, which is a free service that distributes that across the internet as a podcast. It gets you on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, anywhere you are looking, you will find those podcasts there. You can also make short audio clips, especially on Twitter. They have the ability now to make short little bursts of audio that if you want to convey a quick message as opposed to writing something out, you can put that out as a quick thought. Like, I'm sick and tired of everybody talking about Rocket Mortgage. It would be better if they just gave me a call and I saved them tons of money by getting them a better rate and offered them better service. And you can put that out there. Finally, I'm going to talk today about pillar content and post-creative strategy. Pillar content. I'm making it right now. I have four cameras in the room plus audio right now. I'm going to take this one video and I'm going to make it a single long form piece of video. I'm going to chop it up into several small pieces anytime I make a good point. Maybe if somebody laughs, maybe getting Kevin in the back of the room with his laptop going off. It's a real easy way for me to go through and chop it up and make a whole bunch of different things. You can also pull the audio out of this and this is going to be a podcast episode that I'm going to publish. I'm also going to put different clips potentially with just a description. If there's a good shot where I'm actually making a, you know, I'm saying something that's very informative to you guys and somebody has the light bulb go off and she gets it over here and I can make a still shot of that image, we have an opportunity to make a photo out of that and put that out there. If I really wanted to, I could put the captions on, on uh, YouTube or on Instagram, uh, IGTV, and it will automatically transcribe all of my words into writing. And then I just have to go through and I can make that a quick article by just editing the words that are going out there. So you don't have to sit and think of hundreds of different things all the time. You can have one piece of pillar content that you chop up. I post a video on Facebook, what, nearly every day, Alyssa? When's the last time I recorded a video that, uh, that was posted on a daily basis? At least a month or more ago. 
at least a month or more ago. Outside of my podcast, I have not recorded any video for long form or short form content for my Facebook page in months. Yet I still have the ability to post every single day because I have those pillar content pieces that we can chop up and put out as short form videos. Post creative strategy is knowing how to utilize your pillar content. So I know that I'm gonna utilize this specific talk for a bunch of different things because I do travel, I do speak to other audiences on how they can utilize social media to do this stuff. So I think specifically about the words that I'm gonna say and what I'm gonna share with you guys so that I know at specific points where I have her writing down timestamps on different things that I can cut to that specific point and turn that into my other piece of content. I also know that I'm going to turn it into a podcast and have it on my YouTube channel and put it on LinkedIn and transcribe the audio so I can make an article out of this so that I can help other people utilize these strategies to gain more attention so that they have opportunities to talk to more people. So that's all your content creation. Now we go into content curation. Has anybody ever shared a post from somebody else? Show of hands. Did you just share it or did you maybe give your two cents on that post? Give your two cents. Yeah, that's content curation. You don't have to come up with content all the time. You have the ability to go through and actually find something that somebody else has already said and use that to your advantage. Industry information. There is no shortage of information available online today affecting any industry, let alone the mortgage industry. Real estate and the mortgage industry are the two hottest topics in the media right now. Oh, we're in a recession. It's going to be a housing crisis. Oh, interest rates are through the roof. Nobody's going to buy homes anymore. None of that's true, but it doesn't matter because there's all kinds of information that's out there. You can find something that you can easily rebut and put that out with your two cents saying, hey, here's why this is wrong. Interest rates really aren't that bad, and here's why. And you can point back to the 1980s where we had 19% interest rates. You don't have to come up with ideas on your own all the time. There are plenty of other people who are more creative and smarter than I am that I just follow what they're doing and I put it in my own words and I change it around the way I want to. Community events. Does anybody like going out and doing things with friends? You guys are timid today. Does anybody like going out and doing anything with friends? Yeah. yeah. How, do you know, how do you know about these things that are happening in your community? Facebook events. It's an easy way for you to say, hey, personally, food truck festival coming up. I'm super excited. I love going out there and testing out all the different food. Or hey, there's a music festival going on, or Front Porch Fest, or First Fridays, or anything that you're interested in is a piece of content that you can put out and utilize as a way to say, who's coming with me? You're taking that relationship from online to offline, and if you deepen that relationship and go and do these things with your friends, family members, or anyone else, that's a better opportunity for you to have more lasting impression with those individuals. The more, the more relationships you have with people and the deeper they are, the more opportunity you have to get referrals from them and make more money. Because ultimately, what's the point of doing all this if it doesn't generate more business and make you more money? Finally, customer education. Does anybody know anything about how, to, uh, how the process of getting a mortgage goes? Does anybody ever talk about it? Does anybody ever think about, you know, maybe if I put out information about this is how our process works to clients before they come in and fill out an application that maybe it would make things go smoother? Maybe if I explain why we have to ask for certain documents, they know to come in with their W-2s and tax transcripts and the things that you're going to need. Or maybe I help them understand that it's the underwriter who's the a-hole who's making you bring in these documents. <laughs> it's not me. I'm sorry. <laughs> This is things you guys already have to say to people all the time anyways. Why don't you put it out there publicly ahead of time? You know, dress it up a little bit, make it sound a little bit more interesting. Tell people horror stories about the person who didn't listen to why they needed to bring the documentation in and how that kept them from getting the home that they wanted. People want to be informed and educated now more than ever. We are in a changing market that is no longer going to be, I'm going to call the first person who can show me a house or get me a loan because I have to do what I can to get this property because there's 15 other people that want it already. We're in a market where people want a professional who can educate them on the process and hold their hand because let's face it, getting a mortgage is not easy. I was around in 2005 where you walked in with a hope and a handshake and you told them I made a half a million dollars a year and they didn't verify anything. 
That was a much different time. Now they want your taxes. They want your firstborn son. They need your blood type. They want a pint of that blood. It's a lot harder situation now than it was in the past. So if you can be the person who helps them go through that process stress-free by educating them, they're going to trust you a lot more than somebody else who's just saying, click button, buy home, because Rocket Mortgage is not going to do any of that stuff for them. Documentation. I'm documenting all this right now. This isn't just creation for me. I didn't come up with this off the spot. I don't just think, hmm, how do I go ahead and have this content and just sit and do this all day every day? I just figured, my sister works for me. She doesn't have anything going on right now. Hey, come follow me with a camera so I can make this better while I'm already out doing something else. Photos, videos, infographics. You can do all of this stuff to document the things that you're doing in your life. Reels, TikTok, YouTube shorts, they're all quick easy editable videos that you can put out that just say, hey, this is what I'm doing today. You could go through the office and talk to the different people in the different parts of the process of getting a mortgage to get a quick update on, hey, this is what we're doing for you here today. Cindy could come in and be like, all right, it's 8 a.m. I'm getting into the office. I've got 17 applications I got to process today. After I get that done, I'm going to have to go through and get this done and all this different stuff. Here's yeah. <laughs> Does that sound interesting when I say it like that? Probably not. 17 applications, she immediately was like, let's go. You don't, you don't get to be the judge of what's interesting and what's not though. I'm in real estate. My job is opening doors and walking through the most stressful transaction that most people have in their entire life. Sounds terrible when I say it that way. But then I put it on TV and I call it house hunter. We're gonna show them three houses and they have the opportunity to make a decision and they're gonna buy that house. It's complete BS. But people tune in all day, every day to watch that stuff. So quit thinking that what you're doing isn't interesting. Quit thinking that you don't have anything fun to say. Just put that stuff out there. Let people let you know what they think is interesting because that's going to give you opportunities to then have additional conversations and then potentially get new clients. What happened, Andy? There we go. All right, up next, we're gonna talk about diversity in your posts. We're gonna break that down between professional posts and personal posts. Professional posts are your posts demonstrating your expertise. Demonstration of knowledge is essential to demonstrate your competency and to give potential clients confidence in your ability to serve them. Education, find other articles that say something that you want to put out there, something that has good information for your consumer. Simplify that information. Put it into a couple bullet points. Give your two cents. You don't have to be the person who's writing these eloquent speeches or has this huge article that's put out there every single time. Share it and let people know, this is why I do what I do, or this is the kind of information I wish more buyers knew about, or if sellers knew what buyers went through to get their loan, it might make the transaction easier. Quick, easy ways to put that out there. Outline the processes behind, and purpose behind systems. Again, going back to why do people have to turn in everything that they need to for the documents. If you go through and you actually put out an article that someone else wrote, something from the CFPB or something from you know, Frank Dodd, all these other places that have all information and regulations and red tape and the horrible things that buyers have to go through and say, hey, this is to protect you in the long run or this is to make sure that you're in the best position possible to buy a home, that is something that's going to set you apart. Instead of just complaining about all of the crap that we all go through and how stressed we are because we have to keep getting these documents and turning around and going through processing and getting through underwriting, educate the people on what's going to happen and you're going to eliminate a lot of that stress because they know what to expect and they won't have as many questions throughout the process because you've preempted anything that could cause them concern. Post answers to commonly asked questions. Kevin, I'm going to pick on you for a second. When you have somebody coming in to get a pre-approval, didn't come from a referral from somebody else, just somebody who just comes in, what's one of the most common questions that you get asked? Probably have hundreds of them. You can't think of one right now. Uh, how long will it take? How long does it take to get pre-qualified? What are you going to need from me? Okay, so let's stop right there. There's three questions. How long is it going to take, Kevin? Well, after we have a purchase agreement, normal turnaround time is about 20 to 30 days. Okay. What are they going to need? Uh, we're going to need, and then I write this down for them, 
a listing of the items that I need from them and then explain to them why I need those. So W-2s uh, for the last two years, last 30 days pay stubs. If they're a self-employed borrower, we're going to need their tax returns, business and personal. Uh, we need the purchase agreement, um, proof of their homeowner's insurance, and they need to open an account with Devinsville teachers. They, do they need to do that? We want them to because we have the best rates okay. and that would qualify them for the best rates. There you go. How many pieces of content can you make from the things that you just said? Probably a few. Start, start off with, everybody thinks it takes forever to get a mortgage. I can get you done in 20 to 30 days. If you want to find out how, give me a call. Mm, I'm gonna, there's a lot of different things that you need to bring in to be able to get a loan. Talk to me before you start looking so we have those ready to go. Self-employed individuals don't get mortgages the same way that W-2 employees do. If you wanna know exactly what that process looks like, talk to me, I specialize in helping self-employed individuals get a home. Oh. <laughs> I don't sell mortgages, people, it's that easy. I don't come up with these things by sitting down and wondering how am I gonna sell a loan today, because I don't do it. You said three things to me that I can quickly and easily put out there as a piece of content that's gonna start a conversation because I have a call to action and I have information that's useful to somebody who's thinking of getting a mortgage today. Information. This is the stuff that most people don't even think about. They wanna think about me, 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 me. Successes you've helped clients achieve. How many people in here have ever had somebody come to them and say after the fact that Never thought I could get a home. I really appreciate the fact that you got me a mortgage. Has that ever happened to anybody? Yeah. Do you post about that? Or do you say, I closed 30 loans last month? What does that even mean to the consumer? I did this much in production. I don't have any idea. I was fortunate to help 15 families achieve the American dream in the month of July by purchasing their first home. Doesn't that sound a lot better? I'm in real estate, we are the worst. <laughs> Million dollar club, what's that mean? $15,000 in gross commission. Nobody cares about that. We don't focus on the stuff that really matters, which is what we do to help the customer. It's what we do to help people out with what they want. We don't talk about the products or services that only you offer. Andy, what's something that Evansville Teachers offers, or Liberty Financial, I don't know where we're at in that. I'm gonna say both for the video. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's something that you guys offer that nobody else does? One thing. Um, well, it was our gift card. We started copying on those, but yes, we're still <laughs> purchase plus gift card. So purchase plus gift card, first in the market to ever offer buyers cash back at closing. You may not be the only one, but you can still say first in the market to do it. What's something else that you offer that nobody else does? Uh, the best team of mortgage individuals. <laughs> there we go. Give Andy a round of applause, guys. He's tapping you guys up. What's something that's a service that most people don't think about that you could talk about? Tyler, you're in new construction. Tell me about your new construction product. Well, we've got quite a few construction products. There, you already set yourself apart. Already set yourself, we have quite a few mortgage products available for all different people at all different walks of life. We have the ability to do 5% down construction. We have the ability to do turnkey financing. All these different things that you can do Talk about those things. Don't talk about, I do this, I have this, I do this. Clients who need this service can come to us and get it. <laughs> Didn't understand that either. <laughs> Personal posts. Mix in some personality, please, people. Real estate agents and mortgage lenders are the worst about this. Closing, closing, closing. Event, event, event. Closing, closing, closing. Show your humor, show your interests, show your community involvement. Does anybody here volunteer for anything? Do you talk about it? Do you ask other people to be involved in those things? Do you realize that there's opportunities for other people to see that and that be the one reason they call you over somebody else? Charitable activity. Another way for you to put out information that people don't know about. Every year, Facebook, on your birthday, gives you the opportunity to raise funds for a nonprofit of your choice. And you can easily utilize your day with the hundreds of people that are going to comment on your page anyways to highlight some other local nonprofit. 
What do you think the director of that nonprofit is going to think if they get a check and they see that that's coming in from you specifically posting that on your Facebook page? Do you think if they potentially need a mortgage, they might think about you as opposed to the other guy who's never even set foot inside their location or never even given them a call? They may be very, very involved in giving to that organization, but a blank check and a, and a nameless face don't really make sense to them. They don't care about that. They care about the people who can actually be remembered and recognized. What do we always avoid? Say it with me. Politics, religion. Guess what? Democrats and Republicans both need mortgages. And it doesn't matter what your opinion is. It doesn't matter what their opinion is. Because they have money and they can get a loan and you can be the one to give it to them. Do not get sucked into conversations. This is the one time that I will say, do not comment. Do not engage. Do not respond. <laughs> If you get those kind of posts on your page or anything else, there's a button called hide so that nobody sees it, but the person who posted it doesn't know it's gone. You don't have to engage with that kind of stuff. Do not get sucked into the trap of doing that. Same thing with religion. It's just those two things that you never need to discuss at any point in time. Finally, we're going to talk about frequency, and I don't have a whole lot of slides on this one because, in my opinion, the bare minimum frequency that everybody should be doing, whether that's on one platform, two platforms, five platforms, wherever you're at, if you're not posting at least once a day, you are irrelevant. As a matter of fact, if you're not posting multiple times a day, you're probably irrelevant. The algorithm is specifically based off of activity. And if you're not posting, you have no activity. So the next time you post, since there's been no activity, the likelihood that somebody's going to see it is very, very minimal. Not only that, if you're doing it from a page instead of a profile, they're already working against you. They want your money. They want you to put in things that are going to require you to pay for that to be seen. The more time you put in to actually frequently posting from a business page is going to give you a more opportunity for people to engage with that. Then share that from your page to your profile. So Facebook has two different things. You have, a, you have a page, you have a profile. The other thing is get into groups and be active in groups. I'm in five different groups specific just to whiskey because I drink bourbon and I enjoy it. And I enjoy being a nerd about whiskey. And I have a lot of knowledge of what goes in the mash bill, the specific time it has to be aged, what constitutes a bourbon, what's a bottled and bond bourbon. All these nerdy things that have nothing to do with even drinking the whiskey. But it's opportunities for me to get into these different groups and post my knowledge and comments and different things that have turned into actual friendships and experiences and conversations I've had offline outside of Facebook. Find something you're passionate about that doesn't have to do with anything related to work in any way and get involved in that and post that and comment on that and get engaged with that because that will put your information in front of a lot of people and give you way more opportunities to talk to people offline. And ultimately, that's what this is all about is getting an opportunity to be in front of somebody so that maybe they offer you the opportunity to have a conversation about selling them alone. This is going to disgust some of you and I'm just going to tell you that right now. The single most engaged post that I've ever posted on my Facebook is a live stream of me eating a five pound burrito. And yes, I did finish the whole thing. What did you win from your contest? What did I win? I won not. I got the burrito for free and I got a t-shirt. I then went to the Evansville Wings Festival and I competed in a hot wing challenge where I ate a bunch of hot wings. And I was recognized by people who had seen the video of me eating a five pound burrito that I had never met before. Those people walked up to me and said, hey, I've seen your videos on these different food challenges. What are you, a vlogger, professional eater? And I said, no, actually I'm in real estate. And they go, really? What does doing this have to do with real estate? And I said, it has absolutely nothing to do with real estate. What it has to do with is the fact that you're standing in front of me right now and you've asked me about what I do for a living. And now I have an opportunity to ask you, if you're buying or selling a home, do you have somebody that you were working with? I've sold homes to people by doing that before. Up next, distribution strategy. We're going to talk about platforms, context, and engagement. First off, platforms. Who has Facebook? Show of hands. We're going to start with Facebook because that's the most common. Get them high, people. Come on. Keep it up if you also have an active YouTube channel. One. Uh. <laughs> 
Put it back up if you have Instagram. Keep it up if you have Twitter. Put it up if you have LinkedIn. Keep it up if you have TikTok. <laughs> now, now, hold on. Now keep it up if you post on TikTok. Does it have to be work content? No, it doesn't have to be work content. Does it count if I was tagged in TikTok? Mm, maybe. Depends. I've been in a couple. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor, why do you why do you have all these different platforms? Um, I don't know. I <laughs> I like to uh, well on on TikTok specifically, and in my my short videos that I post on Facebook, I like to highlight other people's businesses, um, and do short little uh, spotlights. So that not only, you know, are they, am I encouraging people to like, comment, and share on it, people who they know and their followers and everyone else is also liking and commenting and sharing on it because they're trying to help them grow their business as well. Um, and so that helps me in my visibility with, within the algorithm by doing that. Do you use the exact same content on every single platform? Yep. Oh, okay. We'll get to that too. That's your context. What will be up on next? Do you post on every single platform every single day? I do not. But you do have a good mix and making sure that you're on these different platforms to put it in front of people so that you can do different things. Yep. Perfect. Here's the platforms that I focus on personally. This is not necessarily something that you all have to do. This is just what I have found to be the most successful in my business. First and foremost is Meta. Meta is now Facebook and Instagram. They changed their name because Mark Zuckerberg didn't have enough money so he decided he had to do something to make more. So on Facebook, I utilize posts on my page, on my profiles, in groups, reels, and stories. These are all different types of content that you can put out there. Posts can be those written words, those photos, or those videos. Profiles is you as a personal individual. Pages is you as your business. Do I mix those back and forth? A little bit. But my page is mostly business related content. My profile is mostly personal related content. On occasion, they have a little bit of crossover so that people can see when I'm being personal, I am a professional. This is what I do. This is my business I run. And while I'm being a professional, I am a real human being. I actually do have fun. And I do have things that go on outside of real estate. Groups, as I mentioned, get involved in anything that you're passionate about. It doesn't have to be specific to mortgages. It doesn't have to be specific to real estate in any way. It could be whatever you enjoy doing. It's just having an opportunity to talk to more people. And then reels and stories are short form video content that you can put out that are now getting more organic reach than any other post type that exists. Instagram, posts, reels, and stories. Instagram, you don't focus on the wording, you focus on the aesthetic. You need the photos to look good, the videos to look good, and you need to make sure that you're posting short form stuff so that people are getting that. Reels is being pushed harder than any other uh, content right now because Meta was like, oh crap, TikTok's taking our user base. What do we do? We have to adapt. We're going to copy everything that they do and we're going to put it on our platform. So focus on that right now. The next place I focus on is, focus on is LinkedIn. Posts, videos, and articles. Typically what I'm posting on LinkedIn is links to my YouTube channel where I'm posting my podcasts where I have professionals come in. They could be business owners. I've had other real estate professionals come in to talk about building business. I've had real estate professionals from other markets talk about what they did getting into the business, getting started, how they built a thriving business, things of that nature. LinkedIn is the place where you go to show your expertise. This is the place where you go to use the bigger words. You're going to want to use your vocabulary and show off the eloquence that you possess when you're speaking to the masses. Whereas Facebook is, hey guys, perfectly acceptable. No problem with that stuff there. The context matters on these platforms as well, which we'll get into. On YouTube, long form video is still very effective. Not only is YouTube a very effective platform for long form video, it is the second largest search engine in existence, which is why Google bought them. And Google stole YouTube. They bought it for a billion dollars back in the day and everybody thought, oh my gosh, a billion dollars, that's insane. The amount of revenue that YouTube generates every year is astronomical because people will go there and look for information on everything. There was a woman who went viral for the fact that she built an entire house by herself, did all of the work strictly through YouTube videos. You can literally find everything in a how-to on YouTube. Shorts. They're like Reels and TikTok, however, the difference is they are also fully searchable on YouTube 
and they don't have to just stick with virality, which they already get, but people can go in and search terms and you have the ability to write this huge description with keywords and other things to make it more searchable and findable online. TikTok, it's not just for dancing tweens. As a matter of fact, two thirds of the users are aged 20 and up. That means they're of home buying age, which means they are of mortgage getting age. You know how recent that data is? That was updated three days ago. And those demographics are growing. Age 30 to 45 is the fastest growing demographic on TikTok. Those are the people that you wanna be in front of. Millennials are the single largest generation that have ever existed and they're the single largest home buying generation that ever existed. And there's a whole lot of them that are about to enter the home buying market and they're gonna need mortgages. Context matters. Your psychology of what you expect to read, view, or hear changes depending on the platform you're on. When I say Twitter, what do you expect to go see, Maverick? Don't have a Twitter. Don't have a Twitter, okay. <laughs> Who has a Twitter? What do you expect to see? <laughs> okay, but that's a perfect example. You know if I'm going to Twitter, it's a bunch of political news and hyperbole and a bunch of opinions being spewed. Taylor, when you go on to Facebook, what do you expect? Uh, a mixture of stuff. I mean, everyone posts kind of their own thing. Exactly. Yeah, that's a perfect answer. Cindy, if you go on LinkedIn, what do you expect to find on LinkedIn? Uh, business profiles, um, soliciting either business or just sharing articles, um, business articles. Okay, so we have three vastly different experiences across three vastly different platforms. Do you think that maybe when you're creating content, you might need to think about posting those in different ways across those different platforms? So on Facebook, where I'm breaking it down as pages, I'm usually con posting content about my business, about the community, or just interesting facts. We sit down on a monthly basis and go through the national day calendar, which by the way, there's a national day for everything. There was, we had the Realtor Awards Banquet and we just by random picked that it was gonna be a flamingo and it happened to be National Pink Flamingo Day. Like what are the odds of that happening? What are the odds of that even existing, first off? There's a National Drink Beer Day, there's a National Tequila Day, there's a National Taco Day, Donut Day, whatever you can think of. It's an easy opportunity for you to make a post about what national day it is. When you're doing that, you also have the ability to do some additional things through engagement, which we'll get through here in a second. Profiles, I'm talking about my family, different events, travels, personal accomplishments, awards I'm getting, different things of that nature. This is where you get to show who you are as a human. Be personal, be vulnerable, be funny, be sad, be all of those things that you're comfortable with being because it shows your personality. I have walked into competitive listing situations where I know I'm getting the listing because the person said to me, well, we have another interview, but we've checked everybody out online and you look like the kind of guy we wanna hang out with, so we're probably gonna go with you. Or I've had buyer opportunities where I got three different names and I checked everybody out online. I didn't even call anybody else because you're the kind of guy that knows this area. I'm interested in the restaurants that are going on, so I came to you first. Profiles, or excuse me, groups. Conversations relevant to the function of the group. Don't spam people. Don't get into a mom's group that's talking about kids going back to school and be like, yeah, I know it's really hard right now, especially with these amazing rates that you can get for a refinance. <laughs> Nobody wants you to be that person. Don't do it. That's a good way to get banned. <laughs> Instagram, stories. This is my personal strategy. There's personal glimpses into your life. Now, some of you, raise your hand if you notice that you got tagged in some stories by me the last couple of days. You know why I did that? Because that's an opportunity for me not only to show a couple glimpses into my life, but to also notify you guys of what I'm doing so that hopefully you'll share that information, which I know some of you have. I also put out that information out there to show people that, hey, you know what? Buying and selling real estate is not just what you see on TV. I don't open doors and cash checks. I also have to run earnest money to places. I have to go put sold on signs when I'm uh, selling a home. I have to go and let contractors in. I have to go and meet up with inspectors. I have to go through and do these things. That's all the stuff that you guys can do. Hey, it's not that I'm just sitting in an office taking phone calls and making money. I'm out actually doing stuff in the community. I'm out hosting uh, our sponsored hole at the golf uh, tournament. All these different things that you can do. 
posts are evergreen images and short form videos that are slightly more professional information on my page. I don't do a whole lot of posts on my Instagram. I can't even remember what my last one was because I use that more specifically for my reels and for my stories that are just day to day, behind the scenes, looks at my life to show who I am, what I enjoy, and hopefully help people understand my personality. On LinkedIn, posts are written updates about professional activities and achievements. My videos are YouTube links. I have found that on certain platforms, YouTube links aren't the best way to go. LinkedIn's video platform is kind of terrible. It takes forever to load videos. They don't process very well, and it just doesn't work the way I want it to. However, their preview system on their links that you post in shows the thumbnail of my image and immediately posts a link to YouTube so that can get out there in front of a lot of people. Articles, I've written several long form articles that are still out there that people look at from time to time to get information on different things about the mortgage industry, about communication style, about why it's not a good idea to burn bridges, different things of that nature that I've posted that are just good indications of my professional thoughts on things. YouTube, mostly, mostly I utilize long form video. I've posted one short ever uh, just to see how it worked and it got quite a bit of views. Um, my YouTube is, consists of my podcast, um, information about specific homes. I've done drone tours of Jago communities. I've done uh, food challenges. I've done all kinds of different things. Play around with it, find out what works best for you and just keep posting that stuff. The great thing about YouTube is it's a great SEO optimization tool because it's owned by Google. The more stuff you put out there, the higher you're going to rank. So keep doing it, linking it to stuff that also associates with you as a mortgage lender and you're going to become more acknowledged in the marketplace. TikTok, anything goes here. And I mean anything. It is ridiculous what can go viral on TikTok. There was a guy who made the single best ad ever for Ocean Wave Cranberry Juice and it was just a dude on a skateboard drinking some Ocean Wave. He's from Idaho, that's where I'm from. Yeah. There's a, I don't even know how old she is now, like 17 year old girl from New Jersey named Charlie D'Amelio that's one of the most famous people on the planet because she decided that she was gonna dance on TikTok. Literally anything goes. I've seen people now posting words with music and a video behind it that goes viral on the For You page. Everybody's For You page is going to look different because it's all on the interest graph. So what you engage with is what you're gonna see. My For You page is a whole bunch of really nerdy stuff. I've got Marvel, anime, all kinds of really, really nerdy stuff that I'm into. Also, I've got several real estate agents because that's the stuff that I look, look at. So find what you enjoy doing and post that kind of stuff. What you need to utilize on TikTok is the trending sounds and the different trends of videos of dances and different things that if you're gonna try to build awareness, that's what you do. Taylor, give us an idea of what your most uh, famous TikTok is. Famous TikTok? Oh, most famous. Oh, gosh. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I'd have to show it to you. It's so stupid. It was really funny. Um, can I just do, like, my most recent one? Sure. Most recent TikTok. Uh, my most recent one, I went to Plank uh, Nutrition Bar. Mm -hmm. And I we did a lip sync and sort of, like, a little choreographed number to I Know Victoria's Secret. Uh, because Nicole Burke, the owner of Plank, she's getting ready to hold an all-women's event called Emerge in October, and I really wanted to highlight that as well. Um, but yeah, that got a that got a lot of uh, likes, comments, um, everything else. Whenever I posted it, not only to TikTok but other social media platforms. And you highlighted a local business in the community, which is something that I'm sure they enjoyed. And you talked about an upcoming event that I'm hoping probably got more awareness also because of the fact that you posted it out there. Yeah, yeah. I've done the same thing like uh, with career exploring and um, some people at like one main financial, just a, a lot of different ones. Just off the top of your head, an idea, how many views did that get? The one on TikTok? Oh, yeah. Probably a couple thousand. A couple thousand views. How long was that video? Uh, altogether, it was maybe about two minutes. So a two minute video that got viewed by a couple thousand people, that's 4,000 minutes of viewing that she's gotten in the community, talking about nothing that has to do with what she does, but I'm sure actually put her at the top of mind for somebody who's out there thinking about potentially getting a mortgage. One of the other most important things you need to realize is even monotonous information plays well on TikTok. There is a account that does nothing but post tips on utilizing Microsoft Excel. 
and it's got like a million followers and hundreds of millions of views. <laughs> yeah, anything goes on TikTok. Finally, engagement, and I don't have a whole lot of slides on this because this is the stuff that I want to talk to you guys about that's more important than anything you do about distribution or putting out information or anything else. Social media is first and foremost social. It is not simply a distribution channel. It is not there for you just to put out information and then let it sit there to fester and die. Every single platform has an algorithm that is utilized to determine whether or not it's going to be seen. Every single platform's algorithm is based on the engagement and activity that that post gets, period. Doesn't matter what platform it is. Could be YouTube, could be LinkedIn, could be Facebook, could be Twitter, could be everything basically except Snapchat, which Snapchat is now trying to get into the algorithm game and giving, personal, or giving public profiles where people can see your stuff. How do you get engagement on your information? Anybody, idea? Andy, I'll pick on you. I know you know how. I'm too old. <laughs> oh, you're too old, okay. Donald Trump's got a ton of engagement on Twitter. He's a little older than you. Donald Trump. It's not, it's not a statement for or against, it's just a fact. There's a lot of engagement there. Okay. Are you talking about Facebook? Or? I'm talking about period. Let Taylor Hi, Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one easy thing that you can do is just throw out, just, just put a post that people are going to want to comment on. So one thing that I do is I will throw out a post, hey guys, what's your favorite pie for fall? Is it apple or pumpkin? Come on, I know you have a favorite, everyone does. And everyone will feel the need to chime in and be like, oh, you know, Apple, hands down, whatever, and then, you know, then eventually it will start a war. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but then you have all these different people who are commenting on your posts, and then other people see these comments, oh, so and so is commenting on your post. They see that pop up in their feed, and then they feel the need to go to your page and see, you know, not only the post, but then it lets them know what you're about. Um, so. Is that? That's a great, great idea. What else can you do, anybody else, besides just getting something that's a topical conversation that's gonna spark the debate between Apple disciples and Android warriors? Who's ever tagged another person in a post? Who's ever tagged a business in a post? Who's ever done both of those in a post simultaneously to try to get as much engagement as possible? Who has spent time researching the national days so that you can go and highlight a local business? Yeah, I know you have. We spent a lot of time doing that. <laughs> national Beer Day. Why don't you think about maybe posting a, just had a beer with my boss, Andy Miles, at one of our favorite local spots for National Beer Day, Myriad Brewing Company. It was great for us to sit with Jason Elliott, the owner, and talk about what he's done to grow his business. I've tagged Andy to get his audience. I've tagged Evansville teachers to get their audience. I've tagged the National Day with a hashtag to get that potential audience. I've tagged Jason Elliott, the person, to get his audience. And I've tagged Myriad Brewing Company to get their audience. That's five potential people that I'm going to be in front of their audience to steal their awareness and steal their attention so that I might show up in the things that they're doing. It's going to do another thing. It's going to notify that person that I've tagged them. And it's going to encourage them to engage with that post, which means that it's going to give that even more opportunity for that to be in front of people. I posted a Snapchat or an Instagram story last night while I was working on my presentation for you guys today. And I tagged Cindy, Shasta, Kevin, Andy. No, not Andy. You're not on Instagram. But Evansville Teachers, Tyler. You might have been in one today, too. Bunch of different people in it. You can't see any of those tags anywhere on there because I shrink them down and I make them match the same color as the background so they're not visible. But every single person that I tagged, yeah, you didn't know how I did that, did you? Yeah. We'll get into tactics later. But every single, every single person that I tagged was notified. One of those people didn't follow me on Instagram. Admitted to me that she didn't know I had an Instagram. Knowing that I was coming to teach you guys about social media, she didn't think I had an Instagram. 
<laughs> Won't call anybody out for that one, Shasta. <laughs> but she was notified about the fact that I tagged her in a post and then I got another follower out of that. I also tag locations so that I have the ability on Instagram to potentially come up on the map if people are looking at photos in a specific location that I can get more awareness to people who aren't already following me. There are hundreds of t uh, tips and tricks to get more engagement on your posts that people don't realize, that they don't utilize, that they overlook, and then they go, man, that post was fire. I can't believe anybody, nobody saw it. It's because it wasn't fire. It was crap, and you didn't know how to actually get it in front of the people that matter. Just so everyone knows, it's National Rum Day today. Daiquiris, let's go. Who's with me? Run? I'm going to It's for business related cause. Right. It's for my social media. That's right. <laughs> 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 I'm drinking today. Everyone. At your desk. Okay. <laughs> and he's like, all right, Eric, cut it off. Let's go. Turn it off. Turn it off. All right. Before we get into Q&A and tactics, I want to go over some of the practical advice that I can give you guys. And this is stuff that every single one of you can utilize to start upping your social media game today. First off, let's talk about the technology needed. Do you need to have a lapel mic? Four cameras? Nope. Show of hands, who has an iPhone? Show of hands, who has an Android? Okay. I, I, hey, don't look at me. I mean, I'm here with three iPhones and I didn't say boo to you. It's totally fine. Guess what? Your smartphone has every single piece of technology necessary to do all of these things. You have more computing power in the palm of your hand than NASA utilized to put a person on the moon and bring them back. You have the ability to distribute content in ways that nobody ever dreamt possible in the 1950s. You can live stream yourself right now, which used to cost hundreds of millions of dollars to launch a satellite into space to do. Television networks couldn't do what you can do today until the last three decades. We're in a position today that we have the more technology at our disposal than has ever existed in the history of all time. The history of mankind could not even fathom the fact that I could literally have something that I post now and it can be read around the world in five seconds. So when I hear people say, mm, I don't have the stuff that I need to do the post that you're doing, I laugh because I did it with a single iPhone for three years before ever hiring another person, buying another camera, or buying a single microphone. Didn't have ring lights and tripods and cameras. I had my iPhone and that was it. So if anybody tells me that they don't have the technology necessary to do this, they're full of crap. Budget required. How much do you think it costs to do all the things that I do? Does anybody have any idea what my monthly budget for social media production and posting and all that stuff is? Are you including hardware and software or just for the, the platforms? Forget all my extra stuff. Okay. Just when I was iPhone only, imagine what I had. It is not pretty much free, it's exactly free. It costs zero dollars. It's a free account. All it costs is your time. Who doesn't have time to post on social media? Anybody here? Because if somebody says you don't, you're all sitting in the classroom right now listening to me talk about social media, which means you probably had time at some point to grab your phone and post about something. Even if it was 30 seconds to say, do you want to learn about how to utilize social media? That's an opportunity to post something. When you're having a conversation with a client, has anybody ever thought maybe I'll ask them if they're cool with me videotaping this and utilizing this for educational purposes? Because I've done it. Maybe if I'm sitting down with one of the agents in my office who's struggling with how to go through an inspection response, I say, hey, would it be cool if I didn't put out any personal information about your client that I utilize this as an education piece for other buyers who are going through the same thing? And I've done that. You have time. Turn the camera on all day, every day, and you can get information out of that that is useful, that can be utilized to post and get more opportunities for you to talk to more people. Budget, zero. Time. You have it. Overcoming objections, or like I like to call them, BS excuses. <laughs> These are the ones I hear the most. Finding time, obviously. Every single platform has a scheduling tool that you can utilize, or there's a third-party application that does it for you. 
we sit down once a month and put together a strategy for all of the stuff that we're going to post in a single month. Now, you don't have to have somebody else to do that with. You can sit and spend a couple hours on a weekend and have your entire month planned out at one point in time. Do it as you go. Like I said, pull out your phone. Everybody's got a 4K camera. You've got a better production camera in your pocket than they had to film Titanic. You have the ability to put something out that people are willing to watch. If I can do it, you can do it. I am involved in way more stuff than most people, period. I'm managing an office, running a team, helping people buy and sell homes. I'm on the board of directors for the Indiana Association of Realtors. I serve on three committees on the Indiana Association of Realtors. I serve as the policy and bylaws chair for the local association. I serve as the YPN co-chair for the entire state of Indiana. I also help manage an office of 35 agents, helping them understand the processes of getting through real estate. I'm currently teaching an education course to 15 agents, for 12 agents at FC Tucker, and I'm coming to talk to you guys about how I utilize social media to build my business. So if I can do it, nobody has an excuse on why they can't do this stuff. The next thing is people feel overwhelmed. I talked about a lot of platforms, a lot of strategies, a lot of things that I do. Find one. Cindy, what's your number one platform? Facebook. How often do you post on it? I feel like too much, but apparently not. No such thing as too much. You know why there's no such thing as too much? Because the algorithm will protect you. If it's terrible, nobody's going to see it. <laughs> or, or it's so bad, you go viral. And guess what? Being famous is being famous. Let's call it what it is. I don't care if I go viral. If people know who I am. Yeah. So, you know Facebook. Focus on that. Get really good at that. Make sure you're posting every single day on that and figuring out exactly what mix of personal and professional, what mix of video or photo or words does best with your audience. And then once you get that figured out, you move on to the next. You don't have to start with five platforms. I didn't. I started with Facebook. I started with a video saying, hey, this is Aaron Luttrell. I have an open house today at 123 Main Street. Come out and see me from 12 to 2. It finally ended like that, but I did 17 other takes where I said the wrong address, said the wrong time, all this other stuff. And I've gone back and rewatched that video. Lighting was terrible, audio was terrible, and I didn't even look at the camera because I didn't realize what it needed to be because I was doing it on a laptop. I still posted it, and it sucked, and nobody saw it. And I posted it again and again and again and again. And I kept doing it all the time, every day, until I got to a point where people were like, hey, you're really good at this. Why don't you come talk to our mortgage department about what they can do to utilize social media to build more relationships. So what happens when I snooze Cindy on Facebook because she's posting too much? I'm kidding. Then then you don't, I get a notification and then I come for you. you don't know what happens. <laughs> well, I mean, people, you're doing it every day and they get tired of it. Like, let, that, that's, a, that's a really great question. So I was going to wait till Q&A, but let's get into what happens when I get snoozed because I'm posting too much. The only way you're posting too much is if you're posting crap people don't care about. If you're posting interesting things or useful things or things that they can use in their life to get a better rate or a cheaper home or do something, they're going to want to pay attention to the stuff you're doing. If you're snoozing Cindy, it doesn't matter. Cindy can keep on posting. She doesn't know that you can't see it. You're one person out of how many friends that she's got? A million. Well, there's only 5,000 max, so we need to work on what your knowledge of Facebook is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. You can only have 5,000 friends on Facebook. Pages are unlimited. So, so there's your answer. If, if, you're, if you're snoozing Cindy, her engagement's probably going to go down if everybody's snoozing her. And she's going to realize, not posting the right things. There's no such thing as too much. If you're not getting engagement, Change it up, see what works. Another thing I hear all the time, because I'm in podcasting, is I don't like my voice. Has anybody ever heard your voice on video and said, oh my God, I hate that. Spoiler alert, that's what you sound like to the rest of us. <laughs> we already know how you sound. That is not a valid excuse. I hate my voice on audio. I hate watching myself on video. And I have three cameras pointed, four at times, pointed at me right now. Guess what? I never go back and watch any of this stuff. I already know what I said. I already lived through this experience. I'm going to post it out there and let other people talk to me about it. But what happens if people say I sound weird? Okay. It's been eight years of posting almost daily. 
Never had anybody tell me I don't sound any different than I do in real life. I don't care. Next one. I don't like how I look. People. <laughs> Rich and famous. Nobody on this screen is winning any beauty contests. If these people... Uh, who is this? Danny DeVito. Mr. Bean. Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean. Willem Dafoe. Willem Dafoe. Okay, all these ugly dudes up here on the screen, everybody knows their names. You could probably tell me a movie or a show or something they've been in. Rowan Atkinson, more known as Mr. Bean, automatically. Don't tell me I don't like the way I look. We all see you every day. You think you sound or look any different than we already know? No. The, I sat and ate a five pound burrito and looked like I was gonna throw up on, t on live Facebook video. And I have more people talk to me about how much they enjoyed that video than anything else I've ever posted, which is ridiculous, because there's nothing flattering about that at all. I'm favorite with the wings, because I think you were blowing smoke out your ears. <laughs> for, for those of you who don't know, I sat down and I did the wall challenge at uh, Wings Etc., which is 16 of their wings with their wall sauce, which is straight habanero puree, and you can't drink anything until it's done. And I don't know if you know this about wings, et cetera, but their wings are enormous. So it was a ton of food. It was ridiculously hot. And I get a lot of comments and stuff about that too. There is no excuse that anybody can offer me that I will think is valid as to why you can't post on social media. Now we wanna get into the tactics. And this is where, this is more specific to each of you individually because I can offer the tactics that I utilize and you could say, that doesn't, that doesn't work for me. I'm not a podcaster. I don't have a studio where I can go in and record this stuff, so I'm not gonna be able to do it. I don't have a post-creative strategist that I utilize and hire and pay to help me put out this information to additional people. But I didn't have any of that stuff when I started either. I had Google and I had time and I figured out how to do all of these things. So. You have the opportunity now to ask me any questions about any specific platform and any ways that you can get more engagement to utilize your voice to get more business. Taylor. So I, I know that some, a lot of people, and myself included, um, primarily when I first got Facebook, I'm like, I'm just going to have like close friends and family on here. But like whenever you have people, connections, sending you requests, and I'm just like, I don't know you, but we have mutual friends. I don't know if I should accept this. Would you recommend just accepting all requests? It's a great question, and my opinion on this has changed many times over the years. I'm a father now, and I have two little girls, and I hear all the time about how cute they are, which is great and flattering, but also terrifying as a father. Right. Used to be anybody who sent me a friend request, automatic acceptance. Now it's, okay, I have 3,000 friends on here. If I have less than 200 mutual friends, I'm really looking at it to see if I actually know the person. I'm doing a little bit more of a deep dive to figure out where they work, who they are, reaching out to other people to see if they've actually heard from them and different things. Anybody and their brother can follow me on my Facebook page. It's public, anybody's out there, and I'm totally fine with that. But I'm going to be a little bit more discerning on who I allow into that more personal group of people that follow me or that are friends with me on Facebook. Now, being discerning, still having over 3,000 friends on Facebook, I go through from time to time and look at the comments and different things and who's engaging with my posts. And if it's somebody I don't recognize, I'm going back through and figuring out if they stay on my friends list or not. Social media and your friends list and everything else is like any other database that you utilize. It is not a one and done thing. It is social media, as I said. If there are people on there that I don't remember who they are and we haven't engaged, there's no reason to have them as a friend on my, on my list. It's a great question. That being said, if you're trying to build awareness, private profiles on Instagram or other things are not the best way to do it. You should publicize as much stuff as you possibly can to get as much awareness as you can. So if you're not comfortable doing that with a profile on Facebook, you have other options and opportunities that you can do that. Gary Vaynerchuk is one of the guys out of uh, New York City that I follow really, really closely on how he utilizes social media to build his business and everything else. The guy was married with two kids and I have never seen a photo of his wife or his children ever. And he posts probably a hundred times a day across all his social media platforms. You have the final say in what you publicize. So you can be as open as you wanna be 
or as private as you want to be. But remember, if you're as private as possible, you're not affording yourself opportunity to meet new people. And ultimately, new people is what we're going to need to be able to grow businesses. Any other questions? We've got one question. I got on the boosting post. What do you think about that? So boosting versus ads on Facebook are two different things. They like to tell you it's the same thing, but it's really not. If you have a post that's doing really well, they're going to suggest to you that you boost it. And if you boost it, you got to pay and put it out there and it's going to get it in front of more people. But what they don't tell you is that already has a lower reach for the money than just creating a specific ad to put out there. When you're creating ads, what you also need to take into consideration is vanilla is not your friend. You want to be as targeted and specific in ways as possible. Now, because of a bunch of idiots who messed up and violated all kinds of fair housing laws and things, because we're in credit and housing, they've taken away a lot of the cool targeting features that existed previously. So you gotta make your actual distribution channel on an ad a lot more broad, but you can dial it in and be more specific in the content and the copy that you're putting out there. What I recommend is you create actual specific ads that don't exist as posts anywhere. They're giving those more reach because that is a specific way that they're saying, hey, this is branded content that's being paid for versus this is a page that we're going to give additional organic reach. Even by them paying for a boost, it's still tied to that actual organic post, so they downplay that. That is not just my own personal experience of witnessing that. I've spoken to a sales rep from Facebook, and they confirmed that that is exactly what they do. Hey Matt, is that on your page or your? Profile? It's on your page. Yeah, you you can't pay and boost anything on a profile. It has to come from a business page. Yeah. Who has a business page? All of you. Yeah, the credit union has it for the MLM. So. When's the last time somebody posted something personal on your your loan officer page? Well, we don't want to get fired. Yeah. So. <laughs> On what you're posting. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to be like doing shots or something. It could be. Yeah, yeah it could be like. It could be like uh, posting your photos at the realtor golf outing, hanging out with people. Yeah, stuff like that. I'm like confined in my little personal page, which is fine. I respect corporate. I get it. But what's your favorite restaurant? Mine. Yep. Mexican probably. Mexican. Yeah. Specific restaurant name. Uh, it's in Henderson. It's called um, Tacahawks. Tacahawks. Have yeah. you ever considered taking a client to Tacahawks? Yeah, I have many times. Have you yeah, taken, have you taken a, having the server take a photo of you and your client at Tacahawks and posted that yeah. on your business page? I could do that. There you go. Quick, easy way for you to say, man, it was really exciting catching up with somebody. I helped buy their first home. Checked out my favorite spot, Tacahawks, Henderson, Kentucky. If you love tacos and you haven't been here, you are missing out. Kevin. So would you then recommend, like we do a closing mm -hmm. and I post a post about that and normally it's on my personal page. Yep. Would you recommend posting that to our business page and then liking it from our personal page or sharing, sharing it? Liking it and sharing it, absolutely, 100%. Because then you would get, I guess, double the visibility. Double the visibility. Right. That's the only way that you can ever get organic reach to your actual business page. Because if you're not posting stuff there first, it's not going to show it. Like if you post it as an individual and then you like it as your business page, they're still like, I don't care. Business page, bad. But if you post it on the business page first, like and share it from there, oh, people are actually interested in this brand, Kevin Kirk. Maybe I should show this to more people. And make sure you're tagging with their permission, the client, the closer, the real estate agent, the location, all of those things. And don't talk about, I did this. It's, I was so happy to help whoever accomplished whatever today and post about that. So start on the business and then go for business. Start on the business and go to personal. Don't and we do have that. limitations on the business page though, what we can do. Well, you can't say anything about rates or anything yeah. for yeah. compliance. That's what I'm, there, and there's certain, I think I've tried to post on my business page before and then try to share it from my personal. It's like, and it wouldn't let me, and maybe I need to go back. You've got to go to your share. personal page, search your Right, business page, business page, page and then share it. Share it. Yeah. Okay. That's what I do. And I can't post in my per, my page unless it's on a computer. I can't do it on my app on my Facebook. I was oh, saying. I can do it. Oh, you can. You can do it. So I've actually switched mine. I no longer have a uh, business page. I've completely turned it over into a separate profile, but it's a public <laughs> figure profile. 
to give me all the same tools and things that I can then utilize as a business and ads and all that different kind of stuff. I don't have the same kind of regulations that you guys have on that kind of stuff, so I can do a lot more on that. But guess what, I still don't talk about specifics to any person's credit score or any person's interest rate or anything that is pertained to a specific individual. I keep all the confidential information that I need to confidential and I post about things that are interesting to other people. Interest rates aren't interesting. People just use that as a metric to determine if they're going to use you or somebody else down the street. They don't even know the difference between an actual interest rate and an APR, which guess what? There's another piece of information that you guys can post to educate somebody. Is it redundant to post and share on your personal considering the same people follow you on your page? Do they? How many friends do you have? Well, I don't know. I know it's not you. It's not equal. I have a lot of people that will follow my page that don't that aren't friends with me. I have 3,300 or something friends. I only have 1,600 people that follow my business page. So is it redundant? Potentially. But guess what? For a long time, I did every single post was automatically, I'm sharing it, I'm sharing it, I'm sharing it, because that's the only way you get awareness of your page. When you start to get people who like, comment, and engage with the post on your page versus your profile, you can then start taking back how much you share. Because then that already exists as its own entity that people are paying attention to. Until you get actual posts and engagement on stuff on your page, I would keep share, starting there and share it. That's the best way to get organic reach to put that in front of other people. So you don't have to boost posts and you don't have to run ads. You can actually get that in front of other individuals. Would you, um, like, so now you can post to Instagram and then it would post to Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. Would you recommend doing that or not having the same post on both? Great question. Context matters. People go to Facebook for different things than they go to Instagram for. I keep my Instagram posts as my Instagram posts. I keep my Facebook posts as my Facebook posts. On occasion, there's crossover, but I don't auto post it. I'll go and post it in one place and I'll post it in both places with different context, different descriptions on the actual wording that I use on the post. My Instagram stories auto populate across because again, that's the behind the scenes look of my life as a realtor. I don't care where that's going from. It's going to be the same kind of content because there's no description. There's nothing else. It's videos of me at new construction properties. It's a picture of my cameras in the back of my Jeep saying I'm coming to create content today, which you got tagged in and you were wondering how I did that, weren't you? Yeah. So that can go across both platforms. I will have a YouTube, let's say I do a podcast. That podcast lives on YouTube to begin with. So that YouTube video is going to be there and that's going to be linked to my Instagram story, which will also link to my Facebook story. I'm going to load that natively into Facebook because Facebook looks at that as a video versus a link. And the algorithm says, no, screw that. I don't want to send anybody off Facebook. I'm not going to show anybody a link, but they say, oh, we have a video that lives on our servers and keeps people on our site. Push that out in front of more people. It's more opportunities for us to put ads intermittently into this video that's on my server than if they try to click off and go somewhere else. So that matters. I'm not gonna link my YouTube to my Facebook. LinkedIn, as I mentioned earlier, that link is way more effective in my opinion because when you try to load it as a video to LinkedIn, it takes forever, the processing isn't great, half the time it hasn't loaded for me. So I just utilize that link as a preview because most people who are on LinkedIn aren't sitting on LinkedIn for hours at a time trying to look at specific things. So links, articles, and things of that nature, doesn't matter to send them off site. So, and to answer Kevin's question earlier, whenever he was like, how did he do that? When you're tagging stuff on Instagram stories, you can write tons and tons and tons of wording that's never visible to any other person. And I do it all the time. So I'm using hashtags, I'm tagging people, I'm tagging places, I'm tagging all kinds of stuff, businesses. What you do is you type all your words and then you can just pinch to zoom it down really, really small and find a solid color anywhere on the screen and then you use the color finder to match what's on the screen and it goes out there automatically. It's an easy way to automatically put my content in front of other people. Most of those people will then turn around and add it to their story, which means my story is getting in front of their audience that they may have followers that don't know me. Instagram automatically gives them the ability to come to my profile from that. So I might pick up another, another audience member by doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing is there's all kinds of stickers that you can utilize that encourage engagement like polls, questions, all kinds of different things. Tyler.
questions kind of related to that. Um, I was wondering if you had any analytics as far as platforms and which do you see a conversion more likely for which platform? Yeah. So my biggest conversion of actual business that's come to me is specifically from Facebook. Um, I can point directly to a single video that resulted in uh, sale of a home and three closed referrals since then. What I will tell you right now is I don't use this as a lead generation tool. I use it specifically as a brand play because I'm not out here trying to buy leads that don't care about who I am or what I do. I'm trying to First and foremost, I tell my wife all the time, my goal is to be Evansville famous. I want to walk into any restaurant, any business, any institution, and have somebody recognize me. I don't care who it is. I want to be recognized because that's going to offer me the opportunity to have a conversation that may lead to a sale. Every single person here probably focuses only on the people that you've done business with most of the time when you're thinking about who can I talk to about getting more business. A lot of people overlook the fact that the general public, if they recognize you for being a mortgage loan officer, may ask you questions about that. And you may have a stranger come up to you that gives you an opportunity to make a sale. The person in my database who has offered me more referrals that have resulted in closed transactions than any other person that I have ever worked with has never bought or sold a home through me. They make my sandwiches at Subway. <laughs> and I sold her daughter's house and sold her a new house. I sold her sister's house. I sold her an investment property for her sister. And when she moves, she's going to utilize me to sell her home and buy another one. And it's because she noticed that I came in all the time and had seen some of my stuff pop up on Facebook and said, what do you do for a living? And I said, oh, I'm in real estate. I help people buy and sell homes. By the way, if you knew anybody who was looking to buy or sell a home, do you have somebody that you would use? She's like, no, but funny you should say that. My daughter's actually thinking about selling her home. I said, oh, here's my business card. Have her give me a call. You know what, better than that, go ahead and give me her contact information. I'm gonna go ahead and save it. I won't reach out, but let me get your number two. You let me know when it's cool for me to go ahead and reach out to her and help her out. Or, you know, if she says, never mind, don't worry about it. But now I've got the information from the person who's asking me about real estate first off, and now I've got a phone number of somebody else that I could potentially utilize. That's two different people I added to my database, specifically from the fact that they had just seen my face around the internet didn't know a specific post, didn't know what I did, didn't have a specific question. You look familiar, I've seen you online. That is why I do what I do. To, to follow that up, uh, what about frequency as far as times of day? Like is there a time of day that's gonna be more effective than other times of the day? Changes over time. So about quarterly, I go through and I Google Facebook posting heat maps to figure out what day and what time of day is the most effective time when people are supposed to be on it. I'll tell you right now, Wednesdays between 12 and 2 are the most effective time to post on Facebook because none of y'all are doing your work. You're all on Facebook looking at other stuff. <laughs> I mean, Andy, they're all doing their work. They're definitely not looking at Facebook and doing other stuff. Every single piece of information that you could ever hope to find about analytics or metrics is on an amazing website. Now, I want you guys to all write this one down. I go to it more than any other site. It's G-O-O-G-L-E. I was too. I was too. I stopped after the second O. That's true. But how'd you know the right question to ask me? How am I any different than Google? You just researched it already. You can just give us a short end. <laughs> it's true. I spent some time there for you. One of my favorite links is a let me Google that for you link. I love sending those to people when they ask me questions. Go to lmtgfo dot or go.com and it's let me google that for you. You type in the search query, it generates a link and it literally pulls up a page and it says let me google that for you and then it types it in the search bar and clicks search. <laughs> That's the best way to say, really? Figure it out yourself. <laughs> Freebie for you guys there today. What you got, Tyler? Um, I was also wondering if you, if you ever do any like games or tests or contests or anything like that to kind of drive activity? I have. Uh, you got to be careful with what you do because there's specific rules on what you can post on Facebook, what you can give away, whether it's considered a sweepstakes or not and all kinds of stuff. The rules and conditions of what you're able to do, they don't follow that closely unless 
you start getting traction. And if you've ever actually read what you have to do to post the sweepstakes on Facebook, it is ridiculous. You have to have a separate page where it has all of the rules and regulations, the terms and conditions, and who can apply, who can't apply, all the monetary compensation and all kinds of different things. So I prefer not to do that kind of stuff. Because guess what? That still doesn't brand me in any way. That's a cheap way to try to get a few views in the short term and doesn't actually give engagement to my page, my brand, or what I'm trying to offer. I would much rather do something that's indicative of who I am, like talk about um, a festival I'm going to and say, hey, first five people that come and let me know that you're coming, I'll buy the first round at Burgers and Beer Fest, something like that. Something that's actually who I am and what I do. Uh, do you specifically post on each individual platform, or do you have some type of software that you use to like, kind of get them all concise into a single one? If it is posted on a platform, it is native to that platform that comes from us. I have someone who helps me as a distribution specialist that has access to my business page on Facebook. Um, every single Instagram post is me. Every single tweet that I do, which is not very often, is me. They're all specific to that platform. Every YouTube video is specific to YouTube. I do not have a software in place and I despise using them because there's so much that can go wrong. First off, Hootsuite is a free platform that you can utilize to do a lot of that stuff, but it says post by Hootsuite. And then it's like, oh, he doesn't even have enough time or care to post it himself. I would rather go out and actually spend the time scheduling it at all and knowing what's going on and having that calendar that I can look at because there's gonna be times where you may set something up with a third party software or have somebody else who's managing your social media and completely forget or never even know that there's something that goes out there that could be completely irrelevant by the time that it's posted. So I would have my hand on all of that myself and know what's going out there. What about any kind of like free editing software? Um, well, my iPhone tells me if I misspell something. Are you talking about video software? Yeah. Okay, iPhone, again, I use iMovie. Every single thing I did up until two years ago, every single video was made on my iPhone, edited on my iPhone, and distributed from my iPhone. iMovie is one of the single most powerful editing softwares that is in existence, that is free, that is easy to use. Android users, I'm sorry, I have not found anything comparable at all. That's the only reason I'm actually on iPhone, because I prefer the Android operating system. Um, but I spent years trying to do it with something else. I used Windows Movie Maker and all kinds of things. They're just not as good as iOS. Uh, you, you mentioned calendar. Do you have like a social media calendar that tells you when you want to be posting to what? To we, remind you, oh, it's been three days since I posted to Instagram. I need to get on Instagram. Nope. I just know that I do it every day. I have a calendar as far as um, inside Meta, they have what's called the Creator Studio. And everybody who's got a business page has a Creator Studio and you can link your business page and your Instagram together if you have a business Instagram. You don't have to do that, I'm not recommending that for everybody, but you have the ability to do that. Inside of the Creator Studio, you have the ability to look at your different types of posts, which could be video, could be reels, could be posts that are just links or vi uh, photos or anything else. And then you can schedule them so that they are specifically scheduled out there and you can look at it on a timeline or actually look at a calendar to say, I have this going on this day at this time, this day at this time and everything else. You can put them in there as drafts, which means I can start the content, but I know I'm not ready to publish it yet or schedule it yet because I need to go get additional info to put on that. Like maybe I need to add a photo later on. And you can look at everything that's already been published and yet that can be broken down by all the different post types as well. So. Facebook.com slash creator studio is how you go into that if you've got your account set up ready to go. You'll know if you've never been in it before because I just helped somebody look at it for the very first time today and there will be a billion prompts that pop up to say, this does this, this does this, this does this. Would you like a tour? Would you like to have more information? It will teach you everything you need to know on how to use it. Can I, do you use apps or do you prefer the, uh, like a web browser going on that route? Depends on what, where I'm at and what I'm doing. Instagram, desktop sucks. No reason to use, utilize desktop in my opinion. If I'm making a reel or I'm posting a story, it's all right there from my, from my pocket to the camera, ready to go, done in about 30 seconds to five minutes. On the go, way easier to utilize the app. Facebook, I do a mix of the two. 
People don't believe me when I say this, but I don't look at Facebook that much. You will see how much I put content out there, but I spend about 10 minutes every morning getting on Facebook on my desktop to look for, to, one, I'm looking for birthdays of people that are, are on my friends list. I never comment on anybody's birthday that is a close personal friend or somebody that I've done business with. If you're getting a happy birthday, it means I don't know you very well. So if you've ever gotten one from me, I'm sorry. Let's deepen our relationship. Let's get to know each other a little bit better. What I will do is I will use that list and I will pull out my phone and I'll send a video text message that just says, happy birthday, just wanna let you know I'm thinking about you. Hope you have a fantastic day. Done, sent. 100% of the time, I get a response back from the person that got that message. 90% of the time, that person's response is, you're the only person who's reached out to me offline today. Yeah. You're saying, oh, I'm saying sweet. <laughs> I'm the one person that matters to them. <laughs> They're getting hundreds of messages. They're still having a great day. They're having a good time. It just makes me stand out. Yeah. One of my friends who lives in Nashville said, my own mother didn't take the time to actually give me a call. She just said it on Facebook. So that's one thing I do. The second thing I do is I will scroll the feed for 10 minutes and I set a timer and just look for any opportunity to comment. Somebody's like, hey, we just got engaged. Congratulations, that's amazing. And then I'm making a note. I need to follow up with them at some point in time and find out if they need a new house. Because that's an opportunity with the life change to reach out and say, hey, I don't know if you considered this. Just want to let you know I'm available to help you if you need it. Or, congratulations, just found out I'm going to be a grandpa. Who's their daughter? They're going to need a bigger house. They got another person living there. Might be an opportunity for, opportunity for me to do this. So excited to be retiring. Might be an opportunity for somebody to downsize. There's two transactions I might be able to get to sell their home and help them buy a new one paying attention to things that I can do to comment on that has nothing to do with me as a real estate agent, but just to show that I'm actually actively engaged in their life and care about what they have going on with the knowledge that it could benefit me in the future. What are you laughing at? You were like, what a scumbag, I hate his guts. Yes, that's two listings and two more purchases. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. There are three Ds in real estate that are terrible for the parties that are great for real estate agents. They're great for you guys too, probably. Death, divorce, and distress. Distress is not as good for you guys. But if I can't make my payment and I'm in distress, I need to sell my house and get out from under it. Divorce, that's potentially three transactions. Most people don't get the both the husband and the wife if they're going through a divorce, but you know what? I've done it before, three transactions. List the house, sell two more. Death, it's a house to sell. So I'm not happy about those being good for real estate agents. It's just a fact. I'm sorry, you're my sucks. I mean, don't go insane. Now. Right. No, I'll be like, oh my God. So I'm sorry. For you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. 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 Yeah, I'm any other specific questions that I can help answer for anybody? I've already given Kevin ways to completely convert his way of speaking online, so <laughs> what else can I help you with? <laughs> so, I, what would be a good place to start for me? Because I get very overwhelmed on TikTok. I've made a couple, and I don't even know what the heck I'm doing. There's so many like ways to make videos. Like I watched your, one of yours last night. It was a clip of just like, posting every day. It was mm -hmm. like a story or a reel. Well, I don't know the difference between the two. But you were like, it was like you were in like a parking lot one minute, and then you were in your car, and I was like, oh my gosh. I, cut, cut, cut. Like, yeah. You use iPhone Movie for that? Nope. I actually use the app. I used, re I used Reels. And Can just, we do another Lunch and Learn yeah. where you teach us how to do all this? So, I can teach you right now. Pull up your phone. Go live, everyone. No. <laughs> TikTok or Instagram? Instagram. Okay. Everybody, pull up your phone if you want to do this. All right. All right. There should be a plus button for you to put a new post on. Are you on Instagram? Instagram. Reels are videos, stories are videos, posts can be videos. They all do different things. So when you open it up, whenever it has at the bottom the different kind of posts that you can do, go to Reels. Okay. I didn't even know they had that. Yeah. It is. Uh, 
paging him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, has everybody got it up to go to reels? Yes. Yeah, I'm doing one right now. Okay, you want you want to know how I did those different clips and cuts and different things? Start recording yourself. I already did. All right. I just did like. So you don't? Are you done with a clip? Mm -hmm. I did like 25 yeah. seconds. <laughs> do another one. Record yourself. Just do it. Hi. Oh my gosh. Now watch this. Don't know what I'm doing, but we're doing a reel, everyone. Hello. Now watch this. You're gonna get a cut. So I stopped recording on this thing. You'll stop. Now you gotta cut. Okay. That's all you do. You record in specific small <laughs> clips, and then you cut back in. <laughs> now, okay. now there's different things you need to know. So, who's ever seen a reel or a TikTok or anything that has music on it, that has no other audio, just the music? Uh -huh. Okay, so when you want to do that, the first thing you do is you add the audio before you start recording the video. That will mute your microphone and will not pick up any audio from the room. It's only specific to that music. As you start recording, it'll start playing the music. When you stop recording, it will pause the music. You can get your cuts and everything else you need to that way by just putting it in there automatically to put everything to music. That's the quickest, easiest way to make one. <laughs> then you can just put text overlays on top of it. And every time you t put on text, there's little bubbles at the bottom that you click on those and it will allow you to set the duration of how long you want it and where you want it in the video. That's how you make text appear and disappear in different places at different times throughout your reel. So when you took my phone and you added a second after I did that, you just literally just hit literally that. Literally just hit that, hold it. And then hold it again. Just hold it. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now, if you want to be able to speak and then have music in the background, you have to have that audio in different clips. So a lot of times I'll go through and I'll record specific clips, save it to my phone and then add those clips in so that I can actually put the audio of what I want on there and diminish audio of other things. So you think Reels would be a good place to kind of start? Reels is where Facebook is posting most organic or meta is posting most organically right now in front of other people because TikTok is taking their market share and their mind share and they're like, that sucks. We're going to lose money. What can we do? We're going to copy everything that they do. So the reels are the ones that come across my Facebook that I laugh at every like the funniest. Mm -hmm. I love them. Yes. Yeah. I can't yeah. them one day. Yeah. 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 But if you click on it, it takes you to the top. Sometimes they are TikTok. They just like go. And then you start again. Meta. It's called Meta. Facebook bought Instagram a long time ago. Yeah, so they're the exact same company. I've heard people say, I hate Facebook. They have all my information. I'm getting off of it. And then they post on Instagram and it's like, it's the same thing. Well, what I know is sometimes, you go to click on it, or like, you know, go to that person's page, it will take you to their Instagram. So if you link them, like I have my business Instagram and my business page on Facebook and they're linked so I can have my story auto post. But everything else I keep separate. So that is something you can do. You can, yeah. So TikTok, whenever you have it turned on, it'll give you the opportunity to link to other social media platforms so that you can utilize those to post on Instagram stories. You can post them to Snapchat, you can post them on Facebook, you can throw them to Twitter, all kinds of stuff. But they're not for work. I mean, it's not only for work. It's just the context in which you present that content. You see, I'm seeing where you really makes it negative. By twerking. 100%. Obviously, you don't want to be sharing like that, but. That's really what you're talking about. So you can maybe do like one bit of content during the day, but just change the context from the files. 100%. And those are different posts across different places. That's how you can have one piece of content can be five different posts. Yeah. 
It can be five different posts by chopping it up and making it into different pieces of content. It can be the same post that you post in different places with different context. It can be the fact that I've got one single video that I utilize that I put on YouTube that I will then link on LinkedIn and then I will actually download and load specifically to Facebook because if I put it on, a, on as a link on Facebook, it doesn't get the same play as if I put it as a native video on there. However, the description of that one video across all those platforms will be different. It can be the exact same message, but I'm going to word it differently. If I'm putting something on LinkedIn, I talk about how excited I was to have Amy Payne, certified professional organizer, to come in and help business owners better organize their digital presence online to be more efficient in their businesses. When I put it on Facebook, is I had Amy Payne with Lasting Order come in and talk about how they can help you, you uh, organize your digital life, including home videos and pictures that you may not have thought possible. Exact same piece of content, the exact same video with two very different descriptions. I think that takes a little weight off of all the different platforms being relevant <laughs> and all this kind of thing. Really just find one or two good pieces of content and just change the content. 100%. Yeah. Let's see? <laughs> it gets, it gets <laughs> We're all going to be posting like a bunch of dumb reels. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> what I recommend is when you post when you post those dumb reels, tag your friends. Ask tag me. I know how to do it. You know that we do it. Yes, while we're drinking our rum. Right. While you're drinking your rum yes. tonight, not at your desk, but tonight at right. obviously after working out of the building. Yeah. yeah. It's going down. Mm -hmm. Andy, twenty-five dollar gift card for who makes the best real tonight. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Take that challenge. Yeah, my money's on Taylor. <laughs> She's got more experience. I was gonna say I've already lost. <laughs> <laughs> I got a fourteen-year-old. I can tell all y'all out. There you go. <laughs> so <laughs> we need some amazing crazy. dancing together. <laughs> all right. We have teenagers. <laughs> Did anybody get one idea that you can utilize today? Does anybody have any other questions that I can help answer that you're scared to ask in front of the room? Don't be scared. Show me your hands. I know you do. <laughs> no? Okay. I mean, does it count that I'm just, like, confused? <laughs> it's going to take a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, thing, one, one thing that you could take away from today. What is one thing that you could take away from? I need to post more. There you go. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> because I don't like how I look or how I sound, but apparently that's just what that's what you mean. That's how you look and sound. I don't the example that I had for Aaron, there is absolutely nothing in those rules and regulations probably that, unless there's like 14 empty glasses of margaritas on the table, that may be an issue. <laughs> But other than that, I bet you can post that. No problems. All right. Well, I need to get a, a video sign off for everybody. So I just want to thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to come in here. I hope you found this helpful. I hope that you got some information that you can utilize to maybe have an opportunity to talk to somebody offline through using your social media presence. Hey, this is Aaron Luttrell. Thank you so much for checking out the Aaron Advantage podcast. If you would like to be a guest, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. We're always looking for other people to interview.